Yes, uh, good morning, everyone. We are going to start our webinar on contact wear analysis. Um, first, a little bit about uh, who we are, what we do. This is uh, Ozone Engineering. Uh, we are the ANSYS distributor here uh, in California. Uh, Ozone Engineering was uh, the channel partner of the year in 2015 at ANSYS headquarters. Here's a picture of uh, ANSYS CEO on the right hand side and our sales team here and, and the ANSYS sales VP. So um, um, in this webinar, we're going to talk about highly nonlinear features of ANSYS and uh, we're going to talk about contacts. Uh, we're going to talk about, of course, where uh, which is coupled with uh, contacts, and also we're going to talk about uh, the nonlinear adaptivity. So ANSYS has made uh, a lot of enhancements uh, and uh, in the contact area, and um, here we are showing uh, just a uh, one slide that shows how uh, how far ANSYS has come in terms of uh, specifying. Uh, the nonlinearities. Um, now you can even do a beam to beam contact just like you see here and um, uh, you can uh, basically um, uh, beam to beam contacts and uh, including highly nonlinear deflections uh, that can be handled um, in ANSYS. So this started <laughs> back in version 15 and now in version 16, it has made a lot better. And version 17, which is where we are now, version 17.2, uh, it's uh, it has really the best contact implementations ever, including um, you know uh, the wear uh, of surfaces that we have specified. And with version 16, um, the contact stabilization damping has been introduced. So rigid body motion often can occur in the beginning of a static analysis due to the fact that the initial contact condition is not well established. So uh, what do you do in that case? You know, this is like the, the normal contact and there is a, um, uh, the, 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 there is a normal force and there is a tangential force. So uh, contact stabilization introduces a viscous damping traction that's proportional to, but opposite to the relative velocities between the two surfaces. So this stabilizes the problem. In the past, this has created um, issues with respect to convergence, but um, this contact stabilization has been introduced and it has made the ANSYS um, contact solutions a lot better since the introduction. So this, um, uh, enhanced contact stabilization scheme um, prior to this release automatic contact damping, damping was activated based on the contact status of the entire contact pair in the previous substeps. Now automatic damping is activated based on the contact status of the current iteration and damping is deactivated if any contact detection point has a closed status. In addition, the default damping coefficient has been reduced, minimizing the risk of degraded accuracy while still providing effective stabilization. So overall, this contact stabilization um, has brought in uh, a, a lot better capability in terms of providing good converged contact results. For example, in version 15, um, when we were trying to do a, a contact problem, uh, you would get 0.2% uh, error in the reaction force. Now, with the contact stabilization damping factor set to 0.1, um, you can get 0.004% uh, error in reaction force. So, um, so what this means is that uh, now with the new version, starting with version 16, you're getting a lot better results uh, in less number of iterations. As you see here, 
in version 15, it did 19 iterations. In version 16, it only did eight iterations with zero bisections, and the error in the reaction force is a lot less. And uh, please note that the theoretical calculation uh, on this uh, contact problem was uh, 5,080 enhances in version 16 uh, start giving 5,080.2 newtons, um, which is, like we said, 0.004% uh, error. Uh, so improved stabilization for sliding contact uh, has been implemented, uh, starting with version 16. It can be activated through these key ops. Um, it's and it's very helpful to prevent rigid body motion due to larger sliding for no separation contact definitions. So, um, so the main topic today is really the contact surface wear. Um, you know, the uh, what we discussed in the previous slides were really uh, the enhancements in the contact um, algorithms uh, and uh, enhancements uh, in contacts, so that um, it makes this one, uh, the contact surface wear predictions, a lot uh, easier. So uh, the Archer's wear model simulates the progressive loss of material from the contact surface. Assumes rate of volume loss, we'll call that uh, W dot, due to wear uh, is proportional to the contact surface pressure and relative sliding velocity at the contact surface. The formula is given here. So uh, the uh, the rate of volume loss, W dot over here, is really equal to, um, according to the Archer's formula, K over H, where K is the wear coefficient and H is material hardness, times contact pressure to the M power. M is uh, the uh, pressure exponent and this can be determined experimentally, times relative velocity. That uh, this is the relative sliding velocity to the n power, and that's the velocity exponent. So it's a relatively simple formula, but very powerful. It predicts um, the rate of volume loss. So where is in the direction opposite to the contact element normal? Contact nodes are moved to new positions, and uh, you know by predicting this wear, the contact nodes are moved to these new positions. Contact variables are going to change since the contact, the uh, the nodal locations of the contacts are going to be uh, changing. Uh, the contact pressure will also be changing. The underlying continuum elements also experience a loss in material and volume, thus simulating the wear. So in ANSYS, uh, when we talk about sur uh, contact surface wear, behind the scenes, ANSYS is going to update the contact uh, nodal locations, and then it's going to, through the contact elements, it's going to uh, uh, re-predict the uh, contact pressure. As the contact nodes are moved due to wear, the contact pressure is going to change as well. So um, uh, all of these are defined by these uh, TB commands. So please note that although um, these um, slides that I'm showing you are from Workbench, this is of course first implemented in mechanical APDL. And uh, the, in mechanical APDL, there are a bunch of commands to do this. And um, if you want to implement this in Workbench, you will have to insert commands under contacts, frictional contact, insert commands, and you will have to enter um, uh, the TB commands. So uh, TB come aware, that means you're, you're using um, uh, the Archer model, TB come aware, comma CID. CID is the uh, material ID that needs to be specified as CID enhances workbench, but if you are doing this as mechanical APDL, CID is going to be um, 
uh, represented by the real material lighting. And I'd like to maybe show you uh, an input file. This is an input file that is used in ANSYS mechanical APDL. So in mechanical APDL, you have to say TB comma where comma three, and that is material three uh, that's for that specific contact element. Anyway, in ANSYS workbench, you just put in the word CID and it will automatically grab that uh, number. And uh, so the other uh, important thing is that uh, with the contacts, uh, you have to, uh, it, its uh, asymmetric behavior is recommended, which means if you're doing this in uh, workbench, you will have to get into the details of this frictional contact and specify um, basically specify behavior and um, make that asymmetric. And a penalty-based formulation recommended for convergence. Penalty-based formulation is recommended for convergence. Then that means, you know, you can come in here, a formulation, uh, you can change it to penalty-based and nodal detection is necessary. In mechanical APDL, the material loss due to wear is approximated by repositioning the contact nodes at the contact surface, and that's what we just said. We are repositioning the contact nodes. The new coordinates of the nodes are determined by a wear model. The following models are available for defining a wear. The Archer, um, um, wear model, which is what we discussed. That's really given uh, two slides ago with this formula here. That is the Archard wear model. And uh, also, uh, you know, the Archard wear model is dependent on, again, uh, there's a wear coefficient, there's a material hardness, and there is um, the contact pressure and the relative velocity. So there are four uh, inputs with two exponents. So um, wear coefficient, material hardness, pressure coefficient, velocity exponent, contact pressure, and the relative sliding velocity. However, if you have your own wear model where you may have different inputs, um, then uh, ANSYS, as you know, allows this user-defined wear model. So you will have to write your own Fortran subroutine and bring it into um, as user-defined wear model. So since the contact nodes are moved to new positions, the contact variables are going to change. What does that mean? It really means the contact pressure is going to change and thus simulating the effects of wear. Now, if the contact pressure is changing, that means if we look at the Archer's formula here, you know, this pressure is going to affect the rate, the wear rate or the volume loss rate over here. So, um, so uh, again, by default, the wear calculations are based on the contact pressure if you're using Archer over here. Um, so you have, uh, when you specify uh, the TB command, you have to say TB comma where, and then four commas and ARCH for Archer's model. And then under TB data, you specify where coefficient K, that's the first entry there, TB data, C1. C2 is material hardness, H. C3 is pressure exponent, M. C4 is velocity exponent, N. And um, uh, the C5 is uh, an al optional input over here. <coughs> and then the default is use contact pressure in wear calculations. Or if you set C5 to one, it's going to use nodal stress in wear calculations. Um, and um, if you use C5 is equal to 10, then it's going to be the average, it's going to average the wear increment over the contact area of the contact bear, use contact pressure in wear calculations. 
or if C5 is equal to 11, so you are going to average the wear increment over the contact area, um, contact uh, area of the contact pair, and you are going to use nodal stress in wear calculations. And then if you set C5 to 99, then it's going to calculate wear for post-processing post -processing purposes only. So uh, it's beneficial in cases where contact pressure changes abruptly. For example, symmetric contact with very dissimilar meshes. Um, so uh, that may change. So the C5, this is where you may want to use C5 in cases where uh, contact pressure changes abruptly. And now, uh, along with, um, you know, these contact elements, so we can also use this mesh nonlinear adaptivity. That's an option to trigger adaptivity based on surface wear. So this uh, NLAD command is uh, what, uh, uh, what can be used to trigger this. And um, when the magnitude of wear at the contact element increases more than an amount defined by the user specified criterion, mesh nonlinear adaptivity is triggered and the mesh is improved by mesh morphing. This enables you to simulate large amounts of wear without introducing mesh distortions. So if you have large, if you're modeling large amounts of wear, so then, uh, you know, you may want to look into this NLA, NLAD command. So the following contact elements support modeling wear. You know, contact 171, 172, 173, 174, and 175. To activate contact surface wear, define wear as a material model using this TB command, which we showed a few slides ago. So you use TB come aware command and assign it to the contact elements. But you, so you say TB come aware comma the material number. You must also define the wear properties via the TB data command. That's where you input the uh, uh, K, H, and the exponents. You can use the TB field command in conjunction with TB data to define properties as a function of temperature and or time. Now this is really important because this brings in a further uh, nonlinearity into problem where you may want to take into account temperature and or time. And as you know, um, temperature plays a really important role in uh, uh, material properties. And especially with uh, contacts, the temperature does go up. Uh, and if you would like to uh, simulate the effect of temperature, um, and or time, like creeping effects, uh, then you can use the TB field command in conjunction with TB data to define these properties as a function of temperature and time. So TB temp command can also be used to define temperature dependent wear data. The implementation of wear involves two stages. First, the amount of wear is calculated by a wear model. Next, the geometry is updated to account for wear. So again, it um, you know involves two stages. First, the amount of wear is calculated by the wear model. If you're using our church model, then it's going to calculate the uh, wear rate. And then the geometry will be updated to account for, wa uh, for wear, meaning that um, you know uh, it's going to, ANSYS will automatically adjust uh, the nodal locations. The wear models calculate how much and in what direction a contact node is to be moved to simulate the wear based on the contact results at the contact nodes. A generalized form of the Archer's wear model is available. In addition, you, like we said, you can specify your own uh, user subroutine, and that's going to be the user wear subroutine. And, um, We'll, uh, we'll give you, we'll talk about that as well. So the wear increment, uh, which is the rate of wear times the time increment is calculated by the wear model is used to move the contact node along the direction opposite 
to the contact normal at that node. During the nonlinear solution process, at the iteration in which the force and displacement convergence criteria set by the user are met for a particular subset, the substep, the wear increment and direction at that iteration are used to move the contact nodes. Since this repositioning of contact nodes results in a loss of equilibrium, what do you mean by this equilibrium of forces? Additional iterations are required to achieve convergence. If the solution fails to converge after the wear is applied, the usual procedure of bisection is used. The wear increment is discarded and the solution increment is repeated applying the bisection. Since wear is a material removal process, the underlying solid element does not experience any strain or stress due to the movement of the contact nodes undergoing wear. A large wear increment can result in the opening of an initially closed contact pair. Um, this may result in convergence problems, especially if rigid body motion occurs. Thus, it's highly recommended that you use very small time increments when modeling wear. And this is in generally true for uh, uh, any nonlinear problem in ANSYS is that you want to use small time increments when modeling any nonlinear behavior, including wear. Because wear involves repositioning of the surface nodes to simulate material loss, the element quality of the solid elements underlying the contact elements becomes progressively worse with increasing wear. The analysis may ultimately terminate due to element distortions. So it, it can ultimately uh, terminate due to these distortions, right? So here, for example, I can show you one model that's already converged. The amount of wear here is not that, is not too much. So as you see, the elements are distorted uh, and uh, you can see the wear surface over here. So it's not bad here, but if, if the wear is too much, and it's going to, the elements will be really distorted. And if this happens, if the elements are too distorted, you can use manual rezoning, uh, rezoning or mesh nonlinear adaptivity, that NLADAPT command. Manual rezoning and mesh nonlinear adaptivity are available for these contact elements. That's the only way we, uh, we can do wear simulations. For either method, the total accumulated wear thus far is applied to update the nodal positions, and then the quality of the mesh is improved. And then the analysis is restarted. So uh, here's an example of, uh, 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 this is not an example of wear, but uh, we're showing an example of uh, NLAD this adaptive remeshing during solution. Uh, this is actually a seal modeling uh, that we are looking at here. And you can actually see um, how the mesh is um, basically redefined due to these excessive distortions, how uh, ANSYS automatically remeshes. So there's a lot of nonlinear uh, features here, nonlinear contacts, nonlinear wear and also nonlinear adaptive remeshing that all kicks in to do uh, proper wear calculations. So uh, wear is only active for quasi-static and transient dynamic analysis. So the assumption is that wear, you know, we are looking at the assumptions and restrictions, wear is only active for quasi-static and dynamic and transient dynamic analyses. So that's uh, AN type zero or four in ANSYS mechanical APDL. If a linear perturbation analysis follows a static transient dynamic based analysis that included wear, the effect of wear calculated at the end of restart point is also included in the linear perturbation analysis. 
And the second assumption or restriction is um, where must be defined before the first salt command is issued. Where coefficients can be modified between load steps by using TB field comma time command to define time dependent values. Although you can redefine where data by redefining TB comma uh, where between load steps, any analysis involving a restart like this mesh nonlinear adaptivity will use the where data defined in the first load step, irrespective of which load step used as a restarting point. So that's, that's something to keep in mind. It is recommended that you use where only with the following contact algorithms, augmented Lagrangian or penalty function. So uh, this is an important point uh, with the contact elements. If you're using where, use either augmented Lagrange or penalty function methods. If you use where, um, if you're trying to simulate where in answers, use with the pure Lagrangian contact algorithm, this can result in convergence problems and uh, is not recommended. So use augmented Lagrange or penalty function. Where is only available when the contact detection point is a nodal point, another important restriction or assu well, assumption and restriction here where is only available when the contact detection point is a nodal point. Also, where is only available for the following contact surface behaviors, standard and rough contacts. Standard and rough contacts. <coughs> when modeling where, it's recommended that the underlying elements are structural solid elements or structural couple field solid elements where is not available for layered solids. So, um, you know, here in the semiconductor industry, there are, um, uh, use a lot of layer solids to um, define the uh, really tiny, very thin layers, and there, there may be a lot of them. However, where is not available for these layered solids. In general, you should use asymmetric contact to model where on only uh, one side of the contact interface. However, you can also use symmetric contact if where is desired on both sides of the interface. Well, um, uh, you, know, you know, if you want to model where on both sides of the interface, where, for example, in a bearing analysis, uh, usually the bearing surface is the one uh, that wears away. But if you'd like to also model the wear on the ball, then you'll have to do symmetric contact. In this case, define contact elements on both sides of the interface and use the option for nodal stress-based wear calculation to achieve better results. During rezoning, since the geometry is updated with accumulated wear, the wear is initialized to zero. Um, another important uh, restriction here. During rezoning, since the geometry is updated with accumulated wear, the wear is initialized to zero. The same is true for mesh nonlinear adaptivity. The geometry is updated with the accumulated wear, and wear is initialized to zero. <coughs> So here we are looking at um, a, um, a demo problem. Uh, this is basically um, in ANSYS uh, help manual. Um, if you look at your ANSYS help manual, uh, here I'm showing ANSYS help. Uh, under mechanical APDL, under mechanical APDL, uh, there is a there is a section called technology demonstration guide technology demonstration guide again this is under mechanical APDL technology demonstration guide problem number 43 there is contact surface wear simulation 
contact surface wear simulation where uh, you can actually look into contact surface wear, mesh nonlinear adaptivity based on a wear criterion, and user defined wear. So, in this contact surface wear simulation, there are actually three problems that they are showing a regular contact surface wear, wear problem, and a mesh nonlinear adaptivity based on a wear criterion, and a user defined wear. So there are three different separate problems. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it shows up as one problem, but there are actually three separate problems here. So, um, so here we are showing uh, one of them here. This is the nonlinear adaptivity activated uh, problem. And where due to 30,000 rotations are simulated here, this is basically uh, here is the axis of symmetry, and there's a, a copper ring over here, and there's a steel ring over here, and there are 30,000 rotations. So the question is, after 30,000 rotations, how much wear is that? Here on the uh, le uh, left diagram, on the y-axis, we are looking at wear in the y direction, and what is the y direction? Y direction is the axial direction here. X direction is the radial direction, meaning going from left to right. And Y direction is in the vertical direction. That's the axial direction. So here, um, ANSYS is calculating the amount of wear um, in the hemispherical ring. Um, and then where in the flat ring. So this was specified as a symmetric problem. Um, and on, in the, on the right-hand side here, we are looking at uh, the wear uh, along the contact surface initially, and then um, we are looking at the nodal stress after wear. So uh, the vertical axis is nodal stress in the y direction. So as you see here, initially, um, the contact, uh, the, the stress uh, in the y direction was high, but that after wear, the area where it's acting is enlarged, uh, but the magnitude came down. So wear evens up uh, uh, the contact pressure, and wear model captures running in, uh, which means decrease of wear rate with time, in steady state. So you can actually see that um, uh, decrease. Um, it's a nonlinear curve. So where results in more uniform contact pressure and increase in contact area. Again, uh, on the left hand side, we're looking at contact pressure before wear. And on the right hand side over here, we are looking at contact pressure after wear. As you see, it has um, it had a larger magnitude here uh, before wear, and after wear, the contact area is actually larger, and it's kind of evened out. The contact pressure is kind of uh, evened out over here. And uh, adaptive mesh morphing enables simulating large wear in case you uh, you have large wear. Uh, this adaptive mesh morphing improves the mesh and lets you put more elements because uh, the more elements you have in the contact area, the better the prediction of the contact stress um, and the contact pressure. And that's really important because contact pressure is directly related, uh, uh, it's directly related with an exponent to the amount of wear. So if we do not calculate the contact pressure uh, correctly, we are not going to uh, predict wear correctly. And um, here's the kind of the animation that shows um, what happens um, as we go up in the number of, as wear continues on. As you see here, the contact area increases as wear continues on, and the nodal locations are um, basically. Um, uh, the nodal locations are updated. 
So you can actually uh, try this on your own. There are input files that you can download from ANSYS customer portal. Um, uh, this is, uh, you can use an input file using the Archer uh, Wear model. Um, uh, and this is the asymmetric contact. There's another input file using Archer Wear model with nodal stresses for wear and symmetric contact. That means with this, you can predict wear both on the contact side as well as the target side. And an input file demonstrating is user-defined wear model. So if you don't want to use Archer's wear model, uh, there's another input file for user-defined wear model. And there's also a user wear.f, which is a user-defined uh, wear model example. Uh, it's a Fortran. Uh, it's a Fortran file. I mean, it's uh, it's a, it needs to be written in Fortran, and there's an example file in there. So um, it's all there. So um, you know, uh, if you have uh, that's basically that brings us to the end of this uh, uh, webinar here. And if you have any questions, you know, please um, send them to info at ozenink.com. We'll get back to you with questions. Uh, sometimes it's difficult to answer a bunch of questions online during the webinar, but uh, feel free to send them to info at ozening.com. So uh, we are here available for soft ANSYS software sales. Again, we are the distributor in uh, Northern California for technical support training and also consulting. Our uh, number is 408-732-4665 and our email address info at ozenink.com. So thank you for uh, attending this webinar and we look forward to seeing you in our future webinars. Um, thanks again and feel free to send your questions to info at ozenink.com. All right, take care.